Uh, listen, earlier this week, uh, uh, Geno BC held a sold out public town hall to prioritize the advancement of uh, genomics for health in the province for the next five years. Now, you wonder how can these kind of programs continue when you hear that the federal government's cutting back on, on monies into health care by about $38 million over the, the next uh, few years and the cutbacks in so many areas. But it's a very important area when you take a look at it because it really means something about being able to understand the human body and our health and diseases uh, far better. Somebody who knows a heck of a lot about this is Brad Popovich. He's the chief scientific officer for Genome BC, and he's uh, joining us on the phone line tonight. Now, I've heard some people uh, say genome. I've heard some people say genome. How do you pronounce it? So, uh, Terry, G- genome. Genome is correct. Genome is correct. All right. So I was right right off the beginning here. How about that? Maybe that's in my DNA. There you go. All right. So pick up on this, uh, Brad, when we talk about the importance of these kind of projects and, and what is it scientifically that you expect to see over the decades as these genome projects continue? Yeah. Well, let me just start by, by explaining kind of why this whole revolution is taking place, Terry, and then we can talk more about Good idea. the things that are coming out of it. Good. What's happened is that it used to be that, that, that uh, looking at a person's DNA uh, was really tricky. It was very, very difficult. Yes. It was incredibly expensive. What's happened in the past 10, 15 years is there's been, uh, if you can believe it, a million-fold decrease in the cost of accessing this kind of information. A million-fold? Yes, a million-fold. Decrease. Fold. So, so, so that's, that's, you know, you know, I challenge everybody. I say, sure. is there anything that you know of any time in the light, you know, in over the uh, course of whatever, where something has gone down, a commodity has gone down by a million-fold? No way. And, and, and no way. So, so here we are at a point, and, and it continues to go down. And it goes down for many, many reasons that I think, you know, are, are maybe beyond the scope of what we want to talk about today. But, but that's a given. So this cost has decreased precipitously. That's made it very, uh, it's made genomics, the genomics of any living organism, in this case we'll focus on human beings, it's made it accessible. So where back in the early 2000s when the first human genome was, was uh, released, it was a $3 billion endeavor. Um, I had my genome done last year for $5,000. For gosh so sakes. Kind of puts it in perspective. So so where we're at right now, so what this has done, this these technological advances, has made this very accessible, and it's allowed us to ask questions of genomics that, I mean, those of us that have been in the field for a long time only ever dreamt of. So the areas that are going to be very significant, so it's impacting everything. It's, it's, impact, it's in, impacting everything from, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, thinking of health and wellness to, uh, you know, I mean, you could look at it from improving health outcomes in, of individuals, yes. improving health care efficiencies yes. in terms of just economic growth of companies that could benefit by, you know, capitalizing on this technology to the scientific discoveries. It could, it could be used to look at chronic diseases, infectious diseases, uh, conditions that are inherited. It could be used to look at our health and wellness. So what we're up against right now is that it, it literally is a tool that can be applied very broadly. And as a, as, a, as a funding organization, we have to be very careful with the way we administer our funds be very prudent, and we're trying to line those up with uh, expectations of, in this case, of the Ministry of Health and the health authorities. I mean, what are the things that would really make a difference if genomics was applied within our healthcare system? And we've identified four areas, and those four areas are in cancer, uh, the diagnosis and treatment of patients with cancer, uh, in infectious diseases, so the, the the, the ability to be able to look at uh, different types of bacterial, viral, fungal pathogens uh, uh, much more effectively. Um, in what I'm calling rare disease, but I'm going to qualify that, um, that rare disease, I mean, it, it really affects about 10% of the population of BC would have something that would be in that basket of rare diseases. So it really isn't that rare. And then the last one is an area called pharmacogenomics, and that really means it's the marriage of uh, pharmaceutical, uh, what a, what a uh, pharm- pharmacist does with being able to use genomics um, 
because one of the top 10 leading causes of death uh, unfortunately is, um, is, is our patients taking drugs and having adverse reactions. And so again, your genome can be used to help decipher if a drug is right for you, uh, what, what drug is right for you, what dose you should be given, and, uh, and, and when should you be given that. All right. When we come back after we take a break here for some news headlines, uh, Brad, I want to I, I want to get into some of the sexy parts of, of of what happens here with this whole DNA issue because I know that that uh, and I've been told and I've read a fair amount about this in in, in uh, some uh, manuals and so on that tell me that it is entirely possible. Uh, that as the years go on, we'll be so sophisticated in this area of, of genomes and DNA uh, that it'll, it'll be virtually almost possible to tell whether your body is going to come down with a specific disease at a certain time and that certain things may be able to be done and that you will, your body will, will, will throw off that disease and totally bypass it and that you'll be able to live much longer than what people have expected. Am I, am I on the right path here? Well, you are, and what, what, what we can do, uh, Terry, is I can explain to you what, what's doable right now right. and kind of where we see the field moving. But, um, uh, yes, we can do some of what you're describing right now today. And, and also you're going to be able to take a DNA and you're going to be able to, to uh, also uh, alter things within some of these cellular structures in order to change the parameters as to how some of these diseases and other issues may attack your body. Uh, that's also being done today also. All right, we'll pick up on those points when we return, and we continue our conversation here with uh, Brad Popovich. Mr. Popovich is the Chief Scientific Officer for Genome BC. Back with him after this. The Day Exposed. It's The Drive with Terry Moore on CFAX 1070. Imagine if there was a significant increase in accurately diagnosing and treating diseases for all British Columbians. The benefits of using genetic information to create a personalized approach to health care are vast. We are talking to uh, Brad Popovich. He is the Chief Scientific Officer for Genome BC. He is joining us on the uh, phone from the uh, Lower Mainland uh, because earlier this week the Genome BC held a sold-out public town hall to prior time the advancements of uh, genomics uh, for health in the province for the next five years. He's joining us on the phone line. So uh, let's, get, let's get into this. You know, we, we hear a lot about some of the sexy stuff when it comes to DNA. You know, we, we end up being able to identify a dead king who just got finally buried this week. We figured that we knew who he was. Uh, we know that, uh, that we can take uh, some uh, DNA uh, as long as the material is at least uh, reasonable and you can identify, you know, a lot of different issues with and, and the possibility possibly find out, you know, who died when, who they are, and so on. But when we get into this area, and we know how it's used also in, in the area of crime, but when you look at DNA and the DNA evidence that's out there, how far do you see this going as the decades go on? Because it looks to me like it's like it's almost, uh, it's almost impossible to stop anything, because if you have the knowledge, is, as they say, uh, build it, and they will come. Yeah, so, so Terry, so let me just step back and say so so if you go if you dial the clock back maybe 15 20 years even right yeah. now um, what we there was a gene there was a disease is a, a disease called Hun Huntington's chorea I know it okay so yeah. it's fairly rare but it's a it's a genetic disease we were able to clone the gene for that and yes. we were able then to very uh, soon thereafter uh, offer diagnostics to any family member that was at risk now, what we were able to do is not only diagnose a person that didn't have symptoms, if they were going to have Huntington's or not, but what we were also able to do um, reasonably accurately is predict when they would get it, if they, if they were going to get it, and right. if so, when. And, and so, so this has been with us for a while. In, now, that's a genetic disease. When we talk about genomic diseases, it would be more things like cardiovascular disease, and trying to predict when a person might have a, a cardiovascular event, a heart attack, for instance. That's possible, though, isn't it? Well, it, 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 it's possible for genetic forms, yeah. but for the things that, and, and those genetic forms, in fact, may be, you know, there, there are many people in the B.C. population that um, carry those genes, and, and, and those genes are going to be accessible now because of the Aha. decreasing cost. I got you. So what's your... But, go ahead. But, yep. but, but for the people with the more complex forms of, you know, high blood pressure and so on, that okay. might need the heart attack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are things that it's going to require 
a large group of, of, of people to undergo genomic testing and to allow their, in other words, the research group that it's going to take to actually be able to power our ability to, to, to pinpoint, pinpoint those subtle things, um, it's going to require hundreds of thousands of people to do this. Right. So it's only a matter of time until that gets done, because you're right, you can't stop this now. I mean, you know, the, the U.S. has just um, indicated uh, President Obama in his State of the Union address said they're going to do a mil- they're going to look at a million people over the course of the next couple of years in the U.S. Right. So what's going to happen is that knowledge around subtle things that affect your health, my health, every British Columbians are going to be now become accessible with this technology. Interesting stuff. I, I, I had uh, one of my relatives uh, sent uh, down some uh, DNA samples to the National Geographic base, uh, you yep. know, in, in uh, D.C., and uh, they uh, got an analysis of, uh, of uh, her DNA and was able to trace our family back in through Europe and England and Ireland and so on and, 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 uh, and gave us even some of the parameters of some of the families in some of the areas and so on that where our family has, has been around, uh, you know, uh, and, 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 uh, and uh, the, the history of the, of, uh, of, uh, the DNA uh, over, I think it was close to, uh, close to a thousand years. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty interesting. So any surprises? for you? Yeah, some really interesting surprises. I won't go into them on the air because I don't want people to say, well, there he <laughs> is, you know. Uh, but uh, And I'm not going to say that I'm going to inherit the throne of, of uh, the Habsburgs or anything like that, but i got to tell you, it's it's very interesting to see the trail coming out of all the different areas of Europe and, and Africa and so on yeah. as, the, as the centuries have gone on. Now, when you got your DNA uh, uh, analyzed, uh, you said $5,000. Uh, we didn't spend anything like that, but what was it that you learned from your DNA? Well, so my, you know, your your blueprint of DNA is three billion units long. Yes. And I've learned my entire blueprint. I've gotten wow. a report back on that three billion. So I've been completely decoded, if you will, and um, and that was done in a clinical laboratory. So what I received back is a clinical report. Yeah. That tells me of the things that I'm carrying and the things that might ail me at some point in the future, and. Um, and, and, and then there's a whole bunch of things that it says that, you know, until more people uh, participate in a similar type of study, we're not really going to be able to have any certainty around many other conditions that are part of that analysis. Is it possible, and I don't know this, but I've, I've heard this, and I, I, I'll find out from you, Brad. Is it possible that an individual, if they so cho- uh, chose to do it, uh, that you you can you can get your DNA analyzed to the point where they can almost put a timeline down to a very short period of time, like within months, as to when uh, you may buy the farm. No, so that's not possible, and um, we're a long way from that. There are things that one can look at in your your genome. Uh, uh, they're the tips of what's called your chromosomes, yeah, and uh, they're called telomeres. And so, yeah, there are many things that one can look at, um, and but but no, we're, we're you know, and and I and I think those kinds of that kind of accuracy and pinpointing things to, to that extent, you know, I wouldn't want to know it, quite frankly. Yeah, but Terry, it's always a balance between how you live, your environment that you live in. That's and your true. Genetics. That's true. But and, you but you could you could see though, such as you have now with with the detail on your DNA, uh, they'd be able to tell you now. Uh, Brad, somewhere down the line, you may be you may be looking at the possibility of a diabetes, or you may be looking at the possibility of some other diseases and so on. But here's what you can do to bypass that, because we've got enough timeline on this, and we know enough about it that you can take steps now to avoid it. Well, that that's the whole concept of of looking at yeah. this material. That's what got me into this field, you know, thirty thirty plus years ago, and and it's what drives me, you know, every day to get up and come to work. And, and, and that is the whole idea is if you can better understand what it is that, you know, you, you know, you, you know, Terry, the way to look at this is when you look at, at your, gene, your genes and your genome, what you're doing is you're looking at, at medicine from the inside out. So what you're looking at is all the causes, all the things that can cause disease in you, as opposed to what the way physicians are trained to look at symptoms. And so, and if you know the cause, and you know that this gene is going to cause you to have diabetes, to use your example, yeah. then what can you do to modify your lifestyle? To avoid it. To avoid it. Yeah. Precisely. And so, I think that, you know, 
for certain our next generation, being the next generation of, of, of you know, kids, you know, kids that are 10 years old now, they're going to live this. For those of us that are somewhere in the middle, I mean, we're going to we're going to feel parts of this clearly. And, and 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 I'm, you know, we at Genome BC believe that in the next five years, we're all going to feel this in a very there'll be significant ways in which this will impact all British Columbians. The accuracy of DNA today compared to where it was uh, many years ago, uh, looking at it even from a from a crime investigation point of view, but the accuracy issue is uh, that that this stuff doesn't lie. Well, it, 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 it <clears throat> you know, so in, 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 uh, so in forensics, I used to be involved in forensics. Right. And, 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 and you know, it's, it, it's interesting that it, it's, it's a better... Um, you know, if, if you use an analogy of a microscope, it's a more powerful microscope. Yeah. Right. And 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 we're getting to a point now where that accuracy, I mean that 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 image that that microscope gives you is personal. How I mean, do you get? It gets it down to the personal level. How do you get your funding? Uh, our funding. Um, so we twenty five percent of the funding for Genome BC comes from the province of BC. Yeah. And and uh, so we see. In many ways, you know, the province of BC, we're proud to say they're really our lead funder. Um, 50%, about 45%, a little bit less than 50%, we competitively, um, we use the 25% of the funding from the province to compete with the rest of the provinces for federal funding. So about the other 45, 50% comes from the federal sources, but they're competitive. And then the other remaining fraction, about 25, 30%, uh, is partners. So um, it might be that we're doing a project where there's a major pharmaceutical company. It right. might be one of our health authorities in BC. It might be um, uh, a First Nations group. Uh, we have examples in, in, you know, all the, I mean, we have many, many, many partners that we've used over the courses uh, of, of years. Okay. And, 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 and really those partners are, are, are the ones that are going to be the end users. So we try to bring, bring them in at a stage where yeah. it makes sense because we're going to transition the technology to their hands. All right, Brad, we are out of time. I wish I could uh, take more time with you, but uh, are you inheriting any castles in the next couple of years? None that I know of, All right. but I'm looking. <laughs> Thanks for your time today. Thank you. Pleasure talking to you. Brad Popovich, Chief Scientific Officer for Genome BC.